damage, you know, on, on the team. Yes, Sejuani does some magic damage, but yeah. it is just lock it. This is this is insane. Okay. It's very rare that you see almost near, at least by EG, but I'm not sure EG really has any chance to fight for it. Well, another fight down to the bottom of side. Fiddle has to again just be respectful of this one. Svenskar is going to spot that Herald's being attacked, and Ezreal will move first, but Zuki a bit low on mana. That's a lot of crowd control. Svenskar cannot get away, and this is... Like, that is reportable. I have no idea <laughs> what Svenskaren is doing. That was a no-brain play from Svenskaren, and Jizuke is going to die, too. He had full vision. Yeah. He knew they were both So, there. we got it. We just got it. We got to show up. Uh, alleviate some pressure, and now we're to the bottom side. The flash knock. They're going to catch Bang on this one. The root, the dunk. Good luck getting away. He doesn't have his own flash to get away from this one. The feathers fly, and there is the kill. Santoro picks up one, but the re-engage is in. Goodbye, Wild Turtle. Santoro's going to try to run. But they're going to catch this one out with Nautilus. They're going to find an easy second stun. Zazel going to claim that kill. And he use that pressure, and he will take another turret here. We'll see if they can actually get first turret. Does look like they will. This is a three-man oh. play. Ulti here. The wave is clear. Zillow has to walk away in Santorin. No, he's able to drop the aggro, and the Herald tanks it instead. They can simply auto the turret instead of going for Kuma, but he's going to be an easy pickup there as well. Greatly executed dive. That turret is a formality, as well as that three-on-one kill topside. Solo going to earn some more gold. Yeah, that's a lot of gold in the pockets of Solo. A little bit of a, of a repeat of, of kind of the previous game where, you know, we, we do see that, that set getting ahead. We do see gold being put in his pocket. Now, this unique Ezreal pick has been interesting so far. Of go. the game here for FlyQuest off of both those Rift Heralds. So their objective control really has been paying dividends. Two Rifts, both the Solo laners around, around it, and... That guarantees FlyQuest do get this dragon, so EG will just try to get... Yeah, it remains to be seen if, if we are going to get a bit of a different outcome. Kumo does have good wave clear, so this can't get tough for Solo, but Solo just ignores him and actually just Solo, beats down. You can see it's it's full Nashers and Landers to the mid laner, and the Triforce and Murmana down the other side. And now a TP play is coming in. Power of Evil could be attacked. Kumo's coming in behind him. Can the Azir get away? They find at least the slow. He summons his turret, flashes the knockup, but I don't feel like he ever lives. He burns the summoner, changes nothing about the outcome. Right and now, now Kumo is now answering that wave on the bottom side. And Solo with the Negatron. The highest solo lane in the game. No one has matched him, and it means that they are able to take down the bottom side of the map, which is Mountain Drake, claimed cleanly. But Zazel might want in. Santorin, oh, is actually going to hit Wild Turtle. The knockup's coming through. It's a lot of damage. He's going to be able to jump in with the feathers and get away. Finds the root, finds a disengage. Ooh, Ignar spotted, though. Ignar could be in some trouble here. He's going to find a knock. He's going to find an ease. Zazel does not have flash. He could be the target. Anchors in. Ignar burns a stopwatch. The re-engage comes in. Solo finds the first kill, and he finds some backline. Puts up the shield. Two for zero so far. Walks away cleanly enough, and there comes the shove back. Pee-wee catches out Kumo. This should be a three for nothing. Trying to slam away, but Santorin is here. Burns the flash. Doesn't find the knock, but they do find the chase down. Three kills. Bang here, but... Bang doesn't even have his ultimate available. Since Karen has no smite, but they don't know the timer on his smite. So if they actually delay too long, it will come back up. Uh, he's not going to get two, in. 2, 1, yeah. And zoned out by Solo takes the 1v2. Make sure Svenskeren... Rather against EG here by FlyQuest. You know, getting the dragon for themselves, winning out on this fight. It wasn't for him. I mean, I looked at a lot of lifetime stats there. For example, P.O.E. We actually has played several marksmen in mid lane. Now, to be fair, his career is longer, so he's got more champs to play. But uh, yeah, the instincts of Izuki there was one of a LeBlanc player, of one of an Echo player, not one of someone who's put in, you know, seven games on Zaya during Funnel meta, where he's like, no, 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 I just stay alive in backline and, and I just kill the Jarvan. Uh, definitely a mistake there. That's going to be a bad instinct, but Tur's going to fall on the bot side, and here comes the next attempt. It's mid lane. FlyQuest going to easily claim Drake number three, and they're looking at a 33 and a half minute Dragon Soul. Stop top from dying, though. I think it does become incredibly hard, and oh, Ignar going in. He did not realize how many people were there. Well, he's going to burn the Zonia Zauer. Glass going to get knocked into the air, finds the charm, can't get away, though. Ult going to land on a two. Solo, he's running out of a lot of health, has to flash, puts up the shield, 600 damage. Santor to the back line, but Ezra ult hits everybody. And that so it means won't be that big of a deal. It's not going to be a pick into an objective. It will just be that pick, and this one blue buff isn't the end of the world. Well, Jizuka going to have to cut away from Santorin. He's going to feel fairly safe if the ult... Well, doesn't even have the ulti, but Dudley in the back line is set, slams him across. Mid laner there, and it is going to be all up to Bang to get this damage done. We'll see if they can make any miracle happen in the 4v5, but they're going to get flanked. 
Gonna go for the big play, gonna try to find the knockup and the engage. Santorin done a half HP. Svenskar and very tanky. Bang locking away. Kumo's gonna be all right. They are, of course, missing their Ezreal, though. The difficulty Ooh. are. Ooh. Nice damage, but I don't think he has the follow through. Yeah, that's with the sniper rifle. Just gonna find that one. Ignar flashes to find the knockup. And Solo is in a position looking for a flank, but Kumo is tracking him. And they have to mark Svenskar oh, because his smite on. is available. Pee gonna pop the ulti. He can't get across with the smite. Easy claim there, flank quest, grab it, even if it does mean solo dies. You take Another one. big objective taken here by FlyQuest. Well played there by Solo. Yes, he was shut down. During that this fight, they have the extra stats to make up for, or sorry, FlyQuest rather, have the Baron buffs on top of the extra stats. And now, maybe a fight towards this mid river as there's going to be the ultis pop. Here comes the fight. A duck to the back line finds some damage. Pulled together with face breaker, but Solo drops the start. Knockups come through, though, the dive into the back line. It's a one for one so far afterwards. Bang low on health. The follow through is in. A triple kill for the Azir. Power of Evil is here to stay and knock down Evil Genius. To avoid, I believe, the Facebreaker damage, but, or rather the Haymaker damage there from Set, but when you do that team fight by himself. And so cleanly picked up this mountain soul. You know, add that, add, add 5,000 gold worth of bonus HP to the gold deficit. That's the gold deficit in this game, but you can still maybe find the opening. PoE loses the shield, there's the slope. This could be a possible kill, he can't win the single item they could buy for damage. He's seeing that out of Turtle as well. And the Void Staff, of course, already done for PoE. Went for that one third. So uh, the back line is going to do a pretty good job even against the tanks as those items are coming through. Still fighting over mid lane control. Zazel, 1v1 and Solo, not going to mean a lot. There's the second ult wave coming across. Couple knockups once again. The dunk tank comes through. And Vegas to flash to stay alive. The front lines, though, very durable. Svenskir still alive in this one. PoE's got to be a little respectful as Kumo tries to find something to do. Facebreaker back. Svenskir has to run away. FlyQuest having the better team fight out. Look, that's one. That's two kills picked up. And bang. Hoping to find the re-engage on Turtle, but can't get it. Juzuka couldn't get more than the ulti. There's a dunk in the back line. That's Guardian Angel forced out of the AD carry. Santorin finds another knockup. He might lose his life, but no, healed back up. Triumph adding up as well. Flack was still on the chase. Zazel running for his life and running very slowly at that. It's a waddle and he's still dead. Zuke now left alone against everyone. Barely even scratches so oh my much. God. Chase him down as well. Quick slow picked up, but they gotta be careful. He's still cutting it out, but you have to believe it's five versus one. Eventually it's going to work. And meanwhile, Turtle is pushing the mid lane. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> because their base is going to be in shambles. Recalls come through, TPs when they need it, and they're ready to push for the base right now. Bud Light Ace comes through, and 20 seconds of the meaningful respawns. Into the middle inhibitor now as well. 18-7 to 7 in kills. FlyQuest can begin the reverse sweep here. They've got a minion wave, and there are no defenders. We're going to game four. FlyQuest strike back in game three. Solo subbing in for the team, and FlyQuest making it work. Their best.